25 Otome games yet to come in 2023 and beyond. That has just never happened before. We already got a Switch localization of Crimson Flower and a Switch port of Noir 9, one of my favorite games, and Senju no Walls port in Japanese, and a completely new game, in short, Tsui Tsui, which got surprisingly positive reviews about being a really wholesome romantic comedy. And that was only the beginning of 2023. The most and most exciting games are still to come. And our Otome streak continues on the 18th of May with the English localization of Kimi Yuki or Winter's Wish, The Spirits of Ido. I think this game was highly anticipated even before the Japanese release but overall got mediocre review and a rather mm, critical review on my side. <laughs> the premise is extremely interesting, I admit, because the main protagonist can see emotion in forms of strings around other people's necks, and if they develop destructive emotions, monsters will appear. Dangerous monsters. And because she could foresee those dangerous happenings, she was exiled as a witch. But then she gets scouted from a secret society which fights those evil monsters and of course she with her like foreseeing power can help them out. Problem is that none of the characters has nor understands emotions. Which I think is like rather critical for a Otome game about, you know, love and romance. And when the main characters don't understand love and romance, so but it admittedly looks really beautiful, has a really nice voice cast, and if you like watching some pretty guys fight, have fun at the 18th of May. Also at the 18th of May, the port of Wonder Fortune R will come from the Switch. It was originally released on the PSP, then ported to the PS Vita, including a little fan disc, and this combination is then ported to the Switch. So the Vita version is ported to the Switch. In Wonder Fortune, you play as a little witch <laughs> with a strange talent because most witches have a certain element. So you can have fire, earth, wind, you know, water. But Lulu, our heroine, doesn't have an element. So in her first year of attending that magical school, she has to decide for an element. And there's nothing more helpful, of course, to decide for a magical element than flirting with the guys with each different element. Welcome to Otomologic. In my review, I described it as the Harry Potter Otome game because there are really so many like Hogwartsy similarities. Like it's just uh, the magical school you would want to. You can like explore things. You have missions to clear the mysteries of the school and all that stuff. I think it's targeted for a younger audience because most of the LIs are also younger and the love development is really pure and innocent for the most parts except for two characters, my favorite characters, of course, <laughs> because I'm steamy girl, who are Alvaro and even more so Bilal. <laughs> He's the horniest of them all and horniness is a character trait and it is my favorite character trait. The huge downside to Want of Fortune is the gameplay system. You have to schedule your week and rise certain stats, which is okay. I don't like gameplay, but okay. But it's really, really annoying that all these animations take hours to play out and you have to watch that every week and only at the end of the week a certain event might trigger or might not because it's like it's RNG. You might get invited on a date or not and might have to quick save and load and replay a segment just to get invited on the date which will drive your love progression forward. I recommend to watch my review to get a full impression of that game. I did like it. I like the characters. They are all extremely like likable. The heroine is extremely admirable because she's straightforward and like very open-minded and she is self-conscious, but at the same time, she's very courageous and just pushes herself and speaks to everyone and just tries things out. Like she's really a good role model. And the character interactions themselves are also really entertainingly written. Definitely on the light-hearted side with some drama and in two roots gets a bit angsty and one root is like really dark actually and doesn't even have a happy ending so i think there's something for everyone to like but just beware the gameplay then on the 25th of may the port of princess arthur will see the switch it was originally released as a psp game that got a really secret exclusive port on the vita no one knows how to get anymore 
and now <laughs> got to port for the Switch. I think they updated some graphic, but apart from that, the game just stays as it was on the PSP. And it's about a girl who suddenly and unexpectedly pulls the magical sword out of the stone, which makes her Queen Princess King. And yes, that's what they call her. So now this really average girl has to become a queen suddenly and is swarmed by the hot knights of the round table. For me, it was rather a game about the hot knights than about her development as a queen. But still, it wasn't like steamy or overly romantic, but that was admittedly the only part I enjoyed. The few romantic scenes and the rather revealing clothes of the knights. It's a good game, but not extremely outstanding in my opinion. Though it is from the same writer as also St. John Waltz, which has a similar motive, because there as well the MC obtains a magical sword and has to learn to control it in a military academy. I think in St. John Waltz the story is a bit stronger, but as a consequence the love development really takes a backseat. So that is the same writer and maybe that's why they decided to port both games, because the same writer as Nilet Miradi no Tembin, Olympias Vare, and Tengoku Struggle, especially in combination with the artist Satui. I think those are, at least Olympia Sori and Tengoku Struggle, are one of the like most successful games, which are also going to have an English localization. But for me, like this Satui Steamy trilogy really is way better than the old games of that writer. Also on the 25th of May, and that's I think way more exciting than the Port of Princess Arthur, is Buster Fallis Season 2 which is a sequel, which means it gets a new, like, crime story and new mysteries to solve, and also new mysterious characters. I haven't played Buster Fellows 1, so I can't say much about that, but I know the hype is real. <laughs> the 15th of June, June 15th, is this year official Otome Day, because on that day, three games will release. First is another Takuyo port, Kamisama to Koi Gokoro, where the MC is an apprentice nun in an orphanage and has to teach three really rude, ill-mannered, aspiring priests how to behave. And next to gameplay and leveling up her stats by gardening and stuff, she has to decide whether she will follow the path of the nun or follow the path of love. <laughs> Figure out how to turn those ill-mannered priests into dating material. <laughs> Another port on that splendid at home day, the 15th of June, will be the port of Hakuoki Sweet School Life, a spin-off of the Hakuoki series, which is set in a modern school. And for some reason, the MC is the only girl at an all-boys high school and has to survive being swarmed by the Hakuoki cast. This game is mainly recommended for fans of the series because it doesn't bother much, like introducing the characters, you just get thrown in and have some fun. There are also little gameplay segments. The Japanese is quite easy, so it's a really good beginner game. If you have played Hagoki in English, for example, and now think, ah, maybe I want to take the plunge into learning Japanese, I think you can could go with that game. I also played it fairly early on, but without having played Hagoki, and that didn't make any sense. But I think the most exciting game for that <laughs> Blessed Otome Day, the 15th of June, is the English localization of Jack Jan. It also features gameplay rhythm elements and was really highly successful in Japan and is now highly anticipated for the English audience. You are a gender swapped heroine who attends an all male like dancing or theater school. And with this setup, of course, the boys don't know that you are a girl, which leads to the game to be more friendship focused and not like heavily, like passionately romantic, but more like really cute friendship and wholesome development. On the 27th of June, the English localization of Trade Maniac will come to the Switch. This was also a quite successful game in Japan, where nine teenagers get transported in a parallel universe and they have to act in little drama scenes in order to gain points so that the weird psychic director will release them and send them back to their own world. To me, this premise promised extreme tension, angst and death. But I think this game is rather about the actually funny character interaction of the characters and it's really a, rather a character driven game because there's like only one truth about this weird otherworldly broadcast. You only like really learn in the last true route and until then it's just 
the cabbing fun with the cast. And I can't really remember a moment where the situation was really tense, where the group almost broke apart because they all suspected each other. Because at the very beginning of the game they decided, okay, we're just gonna be friends, because otherwise that would be no fun and it would be really exhausting to constantly suspect each other. And so the atmosphere of the game was really way more relaxed than I expected. My personal highlight of this year will be the 29th of June when 9 RIP will release. This is a completely new game by my favorite artist, Yuya. Do you see? I have a shelf just for her with all her Yuya games. <sighs> her art is so beautiful. She drew Jakono Laila SSC. One of my other favorite games, Tengai ni Mao. Kafia Shanti is also her, her work. And Hanaya Kanari Waga Ichizoku. And the less known, like, Rose of Versailles. Anyways, <laughs> I'm really excited just for the artist. <laughs> and it has also a really interesting concept. It was advertised as a kind of horror Otome game, or at least like suspenseful Otome game, but I think as it's an Otome game, it won't be, hopefully, like too scary. But you're transported into different worlds and ghost stories. So there'll be a school world and a mirror world, I think, and each world has different levels of horror or different levels of fear <laughs> and romance. And all characters are inspired by true Japanese urban legends. So especially I think it's really interesting for Japanese players who really know the stories or for us to get to know all those ghost stories the characters are inspired by. And I think that's such a cool concept. In my last announcement video I also talked about which characters are inspired by which ghost stories. And oh, they look so good and they sound heavenly. And I'm really excited to see all the different worlds. And the character, the main character is so beautiful. Oh, I just love her art so much, but I'm gonna stop now so I can introduce the other games releasing 2023 as well. Because we're only half through 2023 and like so many games already, I mean. That has just never happened before. I'm so glad I have my patrons so I can actually afford buying some of these games. Like really, thank you guys. <laughs> On the 20th of July, Wonder Fortune R2 will be ported to the Switch. That is the beta port of the sequel to the Wonder Fortune franchise, which takes place after the normal ending of the first game, and you get transported into the past and have to solve the mysteries of the past, with apparently even more annoying gameplay than in the first part. So though I like the characters and though I would be interested, and getting to know more about them and learning more about their stories. I don't think I can take another round of Wonder Fortune gameplay. I will skip on this, but it's a really, really successful franchise and I think it's really great they introduce it to a wider audience on the Switch. And then, followed on the 27th of July, the English localization of Radiant Tail will finally be released. I think Radiant Tail will, was also quite kind of a sudden overnight success being one of one of the most successful releases in the first week of a new Switch at home game. In this sparkly, cute and emotional game, you join a circus crew on the quest to make people laugh or to bring people joy so that the flowers of joy bloom within their hearts and the more heart flowers bloom, the more likely it is that the big magical flower will bloom and can melt the prince's heart. Because a few years ago, in the fight against evil emotion shadows, the prince froze his heart and has stopped aging ever since. And now, of course, the whole country is eager to make his heart melt with the flowers of joy. <laughs> you see, the setup is really so wholesome and so cute. The my review, I described it as a Disney at home again, because it is made for kids. Like, in theory, it could be made for kids being like a really wholesome emotional journey, but at the same time conveying really important lessons about life and friendship and love. Oh, I cried so much in this game because it's so beautiful. Like, ah, oh, how they bring joy to the world and melt their own hearts. Oh, <sighs> I think it's a really good game if you like this wholehearted setting. The romance wasn't very much the focus, but I was still satisfied with Eon's route especially. And of course it's a heavy fantasy setting, so most things can be solved with fantasy and magic. But still, it's just so cute and so beautiful. And it looks so beautiful and sounds so beautiful. And I hope everyone will enjoy it. Also, sometime in summer, we will get the FD, which means like the second part of Even If Tempest. 
Even If Tempest was released one year ago and was the first fully voiced console title by the developer Voltage, who usually focuses on mobile games. That was not the only interesting fact about Even If Tempest, the other was. It is one of the rare multilingual releases or bilingual releases where you can switch between Japanese and English. At release it was in Japanese as well in English as one digital version, there is no physical version, and the same will apply to the second part or the FD, which means like the romantic continuation of the story. It will also release at the same time in English and Japanese in one digital release only. And it promised to give us finally more sweet and romantic time with our characters who really deserve that after what they suffered through in the first part. Watch my review. It's quite a tragic game. <laughs> what is unclear by now is whether the witch will get his own route. I think many people are wishing for it, especially after everyone felt disappointed that the monster from the promotional video was not <laughs> a dateable character. So I think many people are still wishing for the witch. The trailer didn't hint at anything. If they are really cool, they do it, but I personally was not a fan of the witch as a dateable guy. So I am fine with just having more time with Zen and Tyrell and Kreis and starting to date Lucian, I guess, <laughs> because we really got the short end in the main game, right? <laughs> Other localizations in fall, the first Hanna Hour support of the four Hanna Hour games. This was really unexpected announcement because it's by a localization team, which usually does um, voice love localizations. Hanna Hour it's a really interesting series. You enter this new school where everything is about card battles. The Hana Awase. Is it a bit like poker? You have to collect a certain set of cards and with that you damage the opponent. Because there are stronger combinations and weaker combinations. But it's not a card game, it's directly combined like to your real life. So if you die... And that Hana Awase, you also get hurt in real life. The school has a really weird structure. So there's magical energy called like water. And there are like the water goddesses, mostly girls, who supply one guy with that water energy. That's what I got. Everything is really mysterious and what's really interesting about the game, it just throws you in and I think you have to just puzzle, puzzle everything together while you play it. I'm not fine to the game because of the gameplay. <laughs> you might know gameplay is not my thing. And I think these card battles can be a bit repetitive. Otherwise, I think the card battles can be like a relaxed break from the visual novel gameplay. If you like card battles, if you like magical schools, and if you like complicated Japanese, that's good for you. <laughs> what is definitely more exciting is the English localization of Shuin no Vish called Vish Evermore. Another game with a huge hype in Japan with a really interesting premise because there's an island where everyone dies with the age of 21, I think. Because this island is said to be cursed by the like god of death. The people developed a technique to load up your memories, clone your bodies, and then your old body can die, and then download your memories onto that new body. And that's called like the revival. And now our heroine is also said to be cursed by the god of death, or is said to be the goddess of death, because for some reason many people around her suddenly die, rather gruesome. And then on top of that, so everyone is already dying because either they turn 21, or they meet a heroine, or there's a really weird mass murderer running haywire in the city. The Grim Reaper comes to see the MC, it's like, I'm really busy with all the people dying, can you stop that for a bit? And then she has to help investigate this weird mass murderer. And in this course of events gets to know the other allies. If it wasn't clear already, like there's a lot of death, there's a lot of blood, and the game's main theme is despair. Everyone will die, and that's the premise of this Atomic game. And even good endings might not be good endings, they still might be cruel endings. So yeah, if you like darkness and despair, I hope fall will come soon. <laughs> On the 3rd August, another Spade no Kuni no Alice game will release. I think you can say it's the sequel to the White World released 
two years ago. And the Kuni no Ali series is a long ongoing series which started in the PSP era with the heart no Kuni no Alice, and I think that also has an English fan patch. And the overall motive is always, as Alice in Wonderland, that you get like transported into another world, but that world is rather dark. Like in the Spade no Kuni no Ali series, I think it's like, like about a mafia war. <laughs> and it's really famous for its symbolism and dark metaphors. This entrance on the Spade no Kuni no Ali's White World has a demo on the Switch, so you can try to get into it. And you should, I think you should definitely play the White World before the Black World, if I understand it correctly. But please comment if you know more about that series. On the 10th of August, we have, like every year, another Hakuoki FD. Wow, like how many FDs are there? Like 10? This one is called Hakuoki Manyo no Sho. And as I still haven't played Hakuoki yet, you know, you want me to. I don't know. I can't say much about it. Apparently, it's more like a spin off with little stories that weren't told in the main story. On the 24th of August, we get an English localization of No 9 Last Era. The sequel slash FD <laughs> to the main game No 9 Bar Commons. I really enjoyed this entry as well because it really elaborates on the story and the lore of the game. And especially if you saw it in the first game, like mm, some things didn't quite match up, though I'm still convinced they do. But maybe the FD sequel can help you ease more into the universe. Because at first you have a prologue section you have to play that tells the story how everyone gets into the ship and how the mission started. Then you have the story of the main game told from the LI's point of view, which I think every FD should feature. Because it's, I think it's so refreshing to see how he perceived the whole situation and it's especially helpful for guys who didn't really vibe with or where you didn't really understand the love development to see his perspective on it. I think for each route there's even one additional scene, which often is really really cute, really allowed me to understand each LI button and I just love that addition. But then of course the third part, like the real FD, the real after story, after the good end is probably why you would buy it. I think most of the after stories are cute, but they, they are not really steamy. Some of them are slightly romantic, but I think it could have been more romantic. And they rather continue with like another conflict the couple has to solve, be it like a private conflict or a conflict connected to the mission. And then my personal highlight in August on the 31st of August is the Japanese release of the Radiant Hail fan disc. Radiant Hail fan fade. And how it looks so far, the after stories will take place of the good endings and give you some sweet moments, but the most anticipated addition are the new LIs, which were like highly wished for. I think one is still missing in my personal opinion, but the two additions are Jinya, the director of the circus, and Lian, the flirty friend <laughs> who really helped out the group a lot and everyone was really sad that he only flirted with Tifalia, but they never got, got a chance to get together. So that's a really nice addition and I think everyone is looking forward to dating those two characters. On the 7th of September, another FD for a really tragic game will be released, so far only in Japanese, and that's the FD to Shuen no Vierge. Epic Licorice. And at first everyone was excited, yeah, finally they have time to be happy together because they couldn't really be happy together in the main game. At the same time, question rise, like, how can they be happy after what happened in the main game? What is even more puzzling, the promotion is kind of a mixed bag. Like, everyone expected FD stuff, which means romance and lovey-dovey and, you know, icha icha times. But then they also promoted it with, like, a new despair. Will it really be Shuena Bush Reloaded? Will we have to go to despair again? Will there be new problems stopping them from just being happy and just spending their time in bad? But what's really good is that the trailer also promises more time with Anko and I think that's really good for the Anko fans. So yeah, I think there are a lot of reasons to be excited for the Shuena VHFD, but also I would like to get more information about it. Then lastly, in November, we have another Japanese Takuyo port called Getsei no Kusari. In this entry, 
you are like teenagers on an island which kind of seems cursed and where the people struggle to even survive. Seems like another like really psychic entry of Takuyo. And it's supposed to be immensely dark and twisted and psychic. So I think the vibe will be similar to Sweet Clown, but in a more realistic and mature fashion. We don't have a date yet, but it's supposedly still to come in 2023, the Cupid Parasite FD, so far also only in Japanese. It's called Sweet and Spicy Darling, and I've already made a little trailer analysis <laughs> in my last announcement video. I think all we can get is like a bit some sweet and spicy times with our characters and an additional new character. No release date at all so far has my nine swallows top star league, a weird crossover between baseball and the Tokyo Swallows, and automate, which means they are not only baseball players, they are also our idols. <laughs> and I really don't know what to think about this game. It looks like a happy game, it looks weird and flashy, but I'm kind of interested to get more information about it. But what I'm highly interested in and will pre-order as soon as it goes live is the Yutakata no Yukoronia, a game by a new studio of like ex-automate staff like Didi, who drew Pio Fiore and other really famous developers. The whole staff that we know so far also worked on the Pio Fiore series. The Tsunamiyo writer also worked on Hakuoki A Want of Fortune, Will-O-Wisp and Hiro no Kakera. And the director not only directed Pio Fiore but also Yunohana Spring. So everyone, including me, is really excited what this game will turn out to be. What we know so far about the setting is that we kind of have an utopian setting where our main protagonist just lives her happy life in this utopia. But she has amnesia and when she turns 18 she starts meeting a man who might be connected to her amnesia and might learn that this utopia is actually a dystopia and that she doesn't know anything about the world she used to live in. Everything screams I love this game so far. The artwork, of course, the characters. I do like this utopia turns into dystopia setting. It sounds extremely interesting. An amnesia character. Mm. We'll see how that'll turn out, but I'm sure they make it interesting. <laughs> so yeah, I think that is one of the most anticipated games of 2024 probably already. Also certainly in 2024, another highly anticipated game will be localized and that is Tengoku Struggle. In Tengoku Struggle, you're a prison guard in hell and have to catch recently escaped prisoners together with a bunch of criminals who ought to help you. What is really interesting about this game is the weird combination of comedy and drama because on the one hand you have a slice of life share house because you live together with the other criminals in order to hunt the escaped ones. But on the other hand, as you get closer to those criminals, you learn about their past and that often is quite quite a tragic past. And that is a really cool concept that you have this criminal hunting, but I think the center of the game is actually getting closer to the allies and really understanding them. And on top of that comes the what I think this team is famous for, the really steamy scene. Because in order to get closer to the allies, the main character has to do something inherently steamy. <laughs> And that's of course the perfect setup for a lot of steamy scenes and a lot of passion between the characters and in a lot of scenes there's a lot of tension and I think this is a really unique combination that makes this game stand out. The slice of life, the drama and the steam. And those were all 25 Otome games yet to come in 2023 and beyond. If that isn't good news. For a bit more details check out all the reviews I made of about half of the games. <laughs> All my last announcement videos for some more detail, especially about the new Japanese announcements.